Hi guys, welcome to this. I'm going to talk to you today about Fukushima Ryu. Now, I'm very excited. Uh, now, quick history behind this. Um, now, Fukushima Ryu, it's not Fukushima, it's Fukushima. But I always pronounce it with an A sound, so excuse me if I do that. But just to give you the background is um, when I was searching a few years ago, searching Japan's libraries and um, collections for all the ninja scrolls I could find. Fukushima Ryu was in a place that was so easy to get. It was in the National Diet Library. And um, and I was like, yes, let's get it out. Let's get it out, Yoshie. So we went there. Shown Ink is there. So we uh, got the man, we signed the forms, got the man and everything to do it. And he just comes back and says, oh, Anthony. Well, he didn't say Anthony. Like, it was uh, all that malarkey. And he said, oh, it's gone. Uh, it's been gone for 50 years. Now, uh, we were like, I made a video about this, about whether, you know, whether Fujita Seiko had taken it, because it ends up being in a Iga museum. But go and see that video. But basically, I think it's called Stolen Ninja Scroll. I'm not saying Fujita Seiko did it, I'm just saying it's a possibility, and you know, it's a point of interest. So basically, we didn't, we couldn't find this scroll, and it was gone, and it, the only copies of this scroll were in the museum in Iga, which we all know is pretty much locked down. Um, so, I was like, nah, you know, it was one of those where I could have got it. Then a gentleman, uh, I think it's pronounced Rouge, I'm not sure, he found out about my work, uh, he's from Scandinavia, and he emailed me and said he was in the um, museum in the early 90s, and that he had a copy of some Ninja Scrolls and would have liked to see them, so I was very thankful, and I'm still very thankful to this gentleman. And... Uh, he sent me a copy of his list and I'm like, yes, look at this, Fukushima Ryu. Now, if you all know my friend Stephen Nogiri, yeah, we'll get to this. He was over the moon, so I got him involved and we got a copy of it. Now, uh, we are dead happy. Now, I said in my last video, it's batshit crazy stuff and it is totally crazy stuff, but, but it's excellent scroll. So we got it. Got Yoshi on the case, we got doing it, but it was so difficult, guys. I'm not joking, it's an extremely difficult scroll to translate because um, probably the person who was writing it was not massively educated. Remember, samurai back in the day in the Sengoku period were less educated than they were in the Edo period, uh, so that doesn't mean that it was from a lower class people, it was probably from like, you know, well, we, we know who it was from. Um, but the point being is they're not all highly educated. That comes in the Edo period. They can still write, but it's not great. And of course, you need the Kuden. But luckily, the scroll came with annotations, which are the Kuden, basically. When you get annotations, that's the Kuden. Some student has wrote it down for you. So what I'm going to do is quickly go through it. Now, uh, there's a guy called Fukushima Masanari, and he... Um, yeah, Batsunori, and he is quite a famous person, you'll find him on Wikipedia, and he was a fighter in the Sengoku period, well hard, in the front, what I've found out about him, he's in the front lines, kicking people down, taking heads, and he has a shinobi tradition, but he's got a friend who's called Nojiri Masa, um, Narimasa, now Nojiri Narimasa, uh, there's a few ways to pronounce these names, uh, well not pronounce these, you can change it, so Stephen Nojiri, my friend, will probably go mad at all this. So, remember now, I've just said Stephen Nojiri. Now, Nojiri, he married into the Nojiri family. Suspiciously, because he, uh, he loves Nojiri. Uh, so, I think he either tracked down this wife and found her, or he became interested in Nojiri after he married them. But anyway, he's married into the Nojiri family, and uh, it's Nojiri Masa, uh, Narimasa who wrote the annotations, and wrote, well, sorry, not wrote the annotations, wrote all this scroll down for Fukushima. So what I'm going to do is briefly go through what's in the scroll. Now the scroll is coming up in my new book. Here's the book. This book is pre-order now. You can go get it or, uh, sorry, you can get it and it will be delivered to you on uh, publication date, which is about June in 2015. It's missed its slot. For those who want to know, it's gone into the next slot. So uh, the world of publishing. So right, I better get on with this because uh, I've got to get it finished. Right. So I'm quickly going to go through what's in there. Of course, the scroll is fully translated. I'm saying it's difficult because there are interpretations on a few of them where you think, hmm, could be the way. And uh, me and Stephen argue about a few of them. I am correct. Right, okay, first one is transmitting dreams. Oh, by the way, when I say batshit crazy, I mean there's lots and lots of magic in this. There are functional things, but it always comes with magic. So while it's stuff there, magic is involved with it. So we've got transmitting dreams. This is the spells of giving your dreams to the enemy commander to give them bad and ill omens for the battle before. 
Uh, also spells for making samurai fall from their horses. And then of course we get practicals, we've got waterproof torches, attack torches, we've got folding ladders, we've got saws, we've got drills. Um, we've also got mace, why don't I say mace, you know they're like pepper spray, but from a gun, so people used to put it into um, guns and shoot people so they could capture them, because of course capturing people was a ninja's job in the end. Um, there's something called gate breaking, which is a uh, still. It sounds like a sort of cannon-esque explosive. It's a bit ambiguous, but of course, Stephen's going to go into a video series of all this. Then we've got castle infiltration. All the things you've got to avoid, like spikes, you know, uh, areas to go in stables. Now we've got an arrow stopper, which is amazing. I don't know how we need JJ. Get experimenting. It seems like, imagine if you've got an, a big umbrella, like an oversized umbrella, but it doesn't fold up, it's just flat, like a T-shape. And it's got bamboo coming out. And uh, what you do is you spin it as fast as you can, or you spin it that way. We're not sure yet. I personally think you spin it on the pole, but it could be spanned that way. And the idea is that the arrows are coming in, you sp and you, you can uh, move up to the target, and the arrows will scatter around it. So it's to stop arrows coming in. Whether it's got a cover on, I don't know. Uh, probably not because it's a spinning thing. If you had a cover, you wouldn't need to spin it. Um, now, infiltration. We've got spells for infiltration. Now, this is where it ties in with Chikamatsu stuff. We've got uh, pulling out dog eyes. So, back to Krista and her video on uh, whether it was actually dog eyes or whether we should look at what the the thing, um, what I'm trying to say, what the actual ingredients were. Krista is correct in that video, but not for dog eyes. Dog eyes, it's actually dog eyes. But at the same time, we've got white snake and black snake or crow snake. And these are all can be, you can interpret these in different ways. Again, I won't go on to that, we've done that in the magic video, so go back to those. Uh, the art of ruining rope, where there's a special um, substance to put on rope to make rope snap and things like that. Now, demon powder and spider powders. These are powders that uh, increase your strength or give you the presence, make you a demon. Are they hallucinogenics? I don't know. We're going to have to go down that road. But the idea is uh, that you, you know, take these pills and become like a demon in the night and you can go through on your shinobi mission. The glowing longsword. Me and Stephen were discussing this and in the end, uh, we both were like, which this, which that. And we looked at the ingredients and it's it's could be, I, the kanji is I think he's literally burning longsword, like fire and longsword. But I had Yoshe backtrack, I said, let's go deeper further with this kanji. So Yoshe went back into the entomology of the kanji and uh, it, it can mean glowing. And I think by the recipe, I think this means glowing. So you put this substance on your katana and in the moonlight it glows, almost like this supernatural, spiritual thing. We're not quite sure what it's for yet, but you know, you get this idea of you're taking demon pills, you've put spider powder on your hands to make you invincible to swords, you your sword glows in the night. You are like, you know, you're a demon in the night. But it's crazy. Not cheery. Crazy. Um, uh, directional listening to wind direction. Uh, infiltration times. Um, disturbing dreams. Again, this is back to sort of inf pushing dreams into people's heads. Uh, the Gando Lantern, but a different version of it, or at least that type of thing. Invisible ink. Um... Now we've also got diving equipment. I think that I'm going to say it here. This diving equipment, it's like a bubble that you hold here and you hold in your mouth. And I've seen them in a few other ninja skulls. Now I don't think this is to breathe, breathe, breathe. I think this is to give you like three or four extra breaths. So imagine if you could hold your breath for a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Imagine if you had two or three extra breaths so you could get up to maybe six, seven, maybe eight minutes. We'd have to get a really good swimmer. I've actually emailed a few good swimmers, but I never got a response. So if anybody out there is a really good swimmer, once the book comes out, get on this. Remember, not breathing, breathe in, breathe it out your nose, hold. Gone. You've probably got an extra three or four, five minutes underwater. Um, a box bolt like the Banks and Shukai, but boxed in together, a bit different, a bit less complicated than the Banks and Shukai. Sleeping powders, embers, carrying embers, of course, which is in every shinobi. Um, stopping blood from, um, to, sorry, to help blood congeal, stop it from um, bleeding out. Um, 
the Immortal Torch, Yoshitsune's Immortal Torch, it's not called this in the in the scroll, but it is that, it's the feathers with the mercury in and the, you know, the glowing thing. Uh, there's one me and Stephen just totally disagree on, Pff, Stephen's that way, I'm that way, I'm totally right, Stephen is just in camp wrong, and this is a fire beyond the wall, and uh, well, you could get, basically I think it's another ember pop, but Stephen thinks it's some sort of magical gold talisman of death, I think, I've, no, I forgot his theories that long ago. I'm sure he's going to make lots of videos about it now though. So uh, come on Stephen, let's get these Fukushima videos. Now please remember the full scroll is in my book. Again, I'll put the um, info at the end. Go to the links below to get the book. And uh, But guys, Fukushima Ryu, we've got it finally. We're on there. We're pulling these scrolls out of the woodwork. We are pulling in. So uh, brilliant. Okay guys, I hope to see you next time.